everyone, uh, today what we're looking at is how to install a auxiliary relay or a bypass relay in your fuel tank or for your fuel pump on your Genesis Scoop. So to, uh, I'm going to cover the things you're going to need to do this. You're going to need a, a Robertson Uh, I believe in number two, or sorry, not Robertson, uh, Phillips. And I did it with a number two, yep. You're going to need some heat shrink tube, a four prong relay, a uh, fuse cap, and we'll talk about the fuse on the inside in a little while. You're going to need some 12 gauge wire, red and black. You're going to need some wire strippers. Uh, you're going to need a soldering iron, some solder, um, some sort of snipper, and an X-Acto blade. So, the first question to anybody watching this video who's not familiar with this project is why would I need to put in one of these relays? Well, on the factory system, you don't need to. But as soon as you start upgrading your fuel pump, we get something called voltage drop, which is uh, the load of the pump is more than uh, the wire can handle, or the pump goes, the pump, uh, yeah, the pump just draws more amperage than it's supposed to. That that causes the voltage to drop, and it can cause hot wires, um, which can be well flammable. You've got other issues that can arise from it, such as burnt out pump motors and stuff like that. So we do this as a preventative measure whenever we upgrade the fuel pump. Uh, in my case, uh, very important to note is uh, the the amperage of the pump that you're going to be using. So we will uh, now talk about the, 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 the fuse. The fuse holder should have a fuse in it, or you need to put a fuse in it. The Looking at the specs of the Walbro 400, which is the pump that I'm going to be putting in, its max amperage draw um, is 22 amps. So I've opted to put a 25 amp fuse in there. The wire, in order to do this, is uh, 12 gauge. You may need um, thicker wire, depending on how many amps your pump draws. There is an actual flow chart on how to do it. And you need to also know how long your wire is. This is actually going to the 4 gauge wire that feeds my audio system in my trunk. Uh, so I've just got extra wrapped up there. And uh, I feel confident using that wire considering it's on a 100 amp breaker. And it, the audio system only draws, I think, 56 amps or something like that. And the uh, audio system only accepts an 8 gauge wire, whereas I've got a 4 back there. So. I actually have a distribution block to step it down from a 4 to an 8, and then it's got two, um, I believe they're uh, uh, 6 or, or not 6, uh, 10 or 12 gauge ports on both sides for accessories. So, uh, for my pump, the distances and everything, and the amperage, uh, I've gone with a 12 gauge wire. You can buy one of these little easy to do wire harnesses for your um, relay, but you don't have to. I've just opted to because if the relay ever died or whatever. So you remove this cover, which you have to remove the rear seat to do. I have another video on my YouTube channel, link in the description, on how to remove your rear seat. And when you get the panel off, to get the panel completely out of the way, you actually have to unplug the electrical connector from the pump. Okay. And you may be looking at this and wondering, oh, which is which? Quite simple. You have a red and you have a, or you have a red and a white, and a black. Black is ground. Red and white is your um, pump power. Blue and green are your sender sensors. So we don't want to touch those. Uh, now you got two options. You can do this all above the tank. Or you can do this uh, above the car base, okay, or the deck height. And you see that these are exposed right here. 
Um, I'm going to do it above the deck because I'm actually going to mount my relay in here and that way I can get to it fairly easily. The distance is, is short and uh, the narrow amount of distance that this uh, looks like 16 gauge wire is going to be is going to be uh, short as possible. Well, not short as possible, but it's going to be fairly short. It's going to be short enough. So, to start this process, what I did is last night I went ahead, made my fuse. Now, you want your fuse as close to your power source as possible, not as close to the pump as possible. You want it as close to your power source as possible. So, I've got like four inches of wire there, but anything up to 12 inches is fairly safe. And then I soldered it onto my little spool of red wire and it goes into my relay. Now, on a four um, port relay, you're gonna have an 86, 87 pin to a 30 pin, and you're gonna have an 86 pin to an 85 pin. The 86 to 85 is gonna be your control, which on my case is blue and green. And then uh, yellow is going to be uh, power to the pump, and red is uh, power to the relay. So how I'm going to wire this up is the 86 pin, so my green, is going to go to the red wire on here. My 85 pin is going to go to the black wire on here, but only on this side of the harness, not on this side, okay? We're going to think of this two-dimensionally. And then we're going to take the 12 volt wire, uh, which goes to the yellow, in my case, and we're going to attach it to this side of the pump. And then we're going to take the black wire on this side and attach it to a new stronger ground, um, which you can pretty much put anywhere since we have a chassis return. So uh, that's basically the brief description that we're going to start with, and we're going to do this in steps. So if you want, you can pause the video, go ahead and put this half of it together. Uh, I gave myself 12 feet of wire, and uh, that's a lot overkill, but since I'm only going to my trunk, I know that's fine. If you are going from the battery directly, do not use a relay there, or a fuse there, okay? Take it directly from the battery, um, because you want to clean, you want like a good, strong, un... Uh, um, it's weird. like you're you're going to be drawing like 20 amps in most cases, so we want to make sure that you get constant clean power. So taking it directly from the battery is the best way to go. So you can run your wire from your uh, um, engine bay or from your battery through the fender or through the wire main wire harness through the firewall and then you can route it either to the driver's side of the vehicle or to the passenger side and then kind of cut across here. Uh, and then you can start on your relay. I did this in my house last night because it is cold. Um, so once you get to this point, so you got the three leads that don't go to anywhere. You've got the uh, um, fuse wired in and all that stuff, uh, we can go ahead to the next step. So we'll pause and we'll get to the next step and then we'll talk about that. Alright, so uh, because of where I'm mounting the relay, I had to make a little bit of an extension, which is no big deal. Um, but you can see here the white and red is where I clipped, clipped close to the pump, and uh, here's the black. This is going to go ground to chassis, okay? But we're not going to use these bolts because they're are these screws because they're plastic lined. So these two here, however, this is power from the or factory relay, and this is just a ground to chassis. This isn't very good ground for the pump, considering we've just given it a whole whack load more current. So we're going to use this ground as the uh, the relay um, solenoid 
is, that's not even the right word, relay mechanism is going to ground to there, so we're not tapping in anywhere else, and it's very, very low current, so we don't need to worry about that. And this here is going to actually run the relay. Um, so you're, you are effectively going to have two relays running your pump. So if for whatever reason your pump stops running, you have two fuses to check and two relays to check. You can technically, I guess, bypass the factory relay. However, you're, you'd have to change to a different source to run your, your aftermarket relay. Uh, alternatively, you could just pull that black and red wire all the way back to the engine bay and um, run off of the factory relay because it's a 40 amp relay, it will handle the load. Uh, but the, you, there'd be other wires you have to upgrade, so the, the route I'm showing you guys today is pretty much the simplest. So this is, is hooked up. It's connected to this red line which goes to my battery and I'm left with the green and the blue. So the green wire is going to go to the red and my blue wire is going to go to the black. It does not for controlling this relay, for controlling it, turning it on and off, it doesn't actually matter. The, the power goes either way. Um, but what is important is that you are using the 86 and the 85. 87 and 30 are the ones that actually run the current through the um, the current from the battery. 86 and 85 control the switch mechanism in the relay. So we are actually, in order to make it so we are not going too, too much further, we are actually going to... Uh, by the way, to access this, all I did was take my X-Acto knife and make a slit up the side. And uh, we're going to make an incision here and we're going to pull the black and the red wire through here and poke it out there because that's where I'm going to tuck the relay. So I will get that done and then we will talk some more. Alright, so there we have it. Um, red is to green, black is to blue. Those go control the relay. The yellow has gone to the red here. Uh, the red has gone to this, which gets, like I said earlier, mounted in the trunk. I heard to my thing. And then the black wire, which is the the ground for the pump, is actually going to be mounted. I'm going to clean the paint away. I'm going to take this bracket off. I'm going to clean the paint away. And then I'm going to put the uh, put it on an eyelet and then uh, ground it to there, which is a fairly decent or I will use the spare, there's a hole, um, somewhere in there, there's another little hole, uh, and I will probably use that actually. But that is basically how you install an aftermarket relay with a dedicated um, battery fed pump system to your pump and uh, I'll clean up the rest of the wiring and mount the relay after I've done changing the fuel uh, pump or fuel assembly uh, so uh, that'll be covered in one of the project would uh, no actually that'll be a how-to further on down the road so or not too much further but whatever alright so uh, I hope this helps uh, clear up some stuff with some people. I hope this uh, makes it at least easier or at least less intimidating to do this mod because it is actually quite beneficial to you if you uh, if you get into the point where you need to switch to an aftermarket fuel pump. So thanks for watching and we will see you guys in the next video.